Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to another episode of NSC Finless powered by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. This week we are at the Pune campus of one of India's leading IT services provider, Tata Consultancy Services. Part of the Tata Group, India's largest industrial conglomerate, Tata Consultancy Services is an IT services, consulting and business solutions organization that delivers real results to global business. Through its unique global network delivery model, TCS offers a consulting-led integrated portfolio of IT, BPS, infrastructure, engineering and assurance services. NSC Finviz visited TCS in Pune with the country's finest experts to advise and educate the young employees on investments and financial planning. And we're now joined by two very special experts. We have Hemant Rustagi, who's the CEO of Wise Invest Advisors. Hi, Hemant, welcome to the show. And we have Pankaj Matpal, who's a certified financial planner, and he's also the MD at Optima Money Managers. Welcome to the show, Pankaj. And our core topic for today is loans and credit cards. So, Pankaj, the word loans. We're living, we are now the EMI generation, so to speak. You'll get a loan for almost everything. Uh, but how do you differentiate what is a so-called good loan and what is a bad loan? I mean, what is a loan that I really do need to take and what is a loan that I don't need, I shouldn't take? Yes, uh, see, as you said, loan is good loan or bad loan. Loan is not always bad. Hmm. Loan is very helpful when uh, you want to start business, when you want to buy a big asset which you cannot afford otherwise. But you have to see that uh, if you can generate more returns, then you pay as an interest on that, then it is a good loan. For example, you want to do a business, you want to take loan for that, you are paying say 13-14% interest and you can earn 20%. So definitely it is a good loan. Similarly for home also, if you want to buy a house and uh, you take loan, you can generate capital, you, can, you are living in that house or you are earning rent out of that, it may be a good loan. But when you are buying some consumable items mm. or for example you are buying a car you mm. take loan of 5 lakh rupees after 5 years when you calculate total interest plus your principal you may be lending up paying five, 7 lakh, 8 lakh rupees right. and when you want to sell that car you will get 2 lakh rupees <laughs> so it is a bad loan right. and similarly for a smartphones or mm -hmm. some things like that when you take loan which is a depreciable asset yeah. that is a bad loan Okay, so basically, just an easy way to do is what is a depreciable asset and what is a, 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 a depreciable earning asset. So, Hemant, while you know the real estate market is so up in the country, people are always do want to buy a home, which is why they then people have to take loans. But how do you decide how much is the loan that I can afford to take? I think first thing I would like to add something to what Pankaj said. We were talking about what is a good loan and a bad loan. If there is any asset which is going to appreciate, that's what we discussed earlier. You shouldn't be taking a loan for an asset which depreciates. House is an asset which we have seen over a period of time that appreciates. So this is one of the loans which is which is a good loan because all of us aspire to have a house. Because not only because you want to have a house, because it also gives security to you and your family. I mean, it's always good to have a roof on your head. Uh, how do you decide how much loan you can take? First thing is you need to look at what kind of house you want to buy. It should begin with that. Okay, and then you need to find out what how much is going to cost you. Generally, a bank will give you around 80% of what you pay. Uh, is obviously we're talking about uh, the agreement price. Okay, that is something that you need to keep it keep in mind. The second thing is you also look at what is your income today. Okay, so you get basically around 50% of what you get net in your hand. Generally, the banks will restrict it to to that. Also remember one thing that when you talk about the cost of the house, it will not take into account the stamp duty or the brokerage that you take. You don't get a loan on that. So you need to take that out and then you see how much loan can you get. But I think it's very important again also before you apply for a housing loan, make sure that you have some kind of credit history. You should have a good credit history. Okay, no bank is going to give you a loan if you have been randomly, uh, you know, applying for a credit card. So I think that is something that you need to avoid. Yeah. Generally, I would say that six months before you plan to take a loan, avoid doing all these things. Don't make too many queries. Don't go to banks taking, I want to 
take credit card. We see a lot of people having, you know, three, four, five credit cards. Uh, and Himan, how do you keep, so for example, when I do want to take a home loan, but I might have a already existing a car lo- an existing car loan or an existing uh, education loan. How does the bank go about in that case? Because obviously I'm part of my earning is going there. So then again, is there like a ratio that they look at? or Like I said, it's basically they can look at broadly your net income. I mean, you have expenses, you have income tax, you also have, you know, these EMIs to be paid. So yeah. clearly all that will be taken into account. This is not going to be looked at independently. So if you already have EMIs being paid for certain loans, that will be taken into account. That's again, that's why it's very, very important that before you start taking loan, make sure that you're taking it for the right purpose. Because otherwise what will happen is when the time will come for you to take a loan for something like a uh, house, you may not actually be able to take a loan. Okay. So, uh, Pankaj, if you want to take Rashmi's question, she says that what is a better option to buy a home and pay EMI for 20 years from now or to invest in safe returns for 20 years and then buy a home? No, it is good to buy a house now, uh, take loan and buy a home. There are two reasons. One is that... Uh, uh, you will have an asset. Second thing, uh, capital appreciation also, if I see, then uh, house will appreciate by the higher rate than the safe investment you are probably referring to. As we discussed about the home loans, so after taking home loans, uh, we have, uh, you know, part payments uh, type of service. Uh, so is it good, you know, to do part payments after taking loans and uh, is there any disadvantage for that or, you know, uh, if any benefits, we can get it. See, benefit is this, that uh, you will uh, repay your loan earlier than the term. And uh, now, because as per RBI guideline, bank will not uh, charge uh, any penalty for foreclosing a loan. So that is also good. You can repay your loan earlier than the uh, maturity. Only thing that you get tax benefit on your interest part, what you pay. And also the principal forms a part of ATC benefit. So, if the loan amount is very small and you are getting benefit uh, in your income tax, then you should keep that much so that uh, you get benefit of income tax. Otherwise, it is always advisable that you repay your loan as soon as possible. On that note, it's time for a very short break. You're watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz, part by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. And today we're at the Pune campus of Tata Consultancy Services. Himant, let's start, before we head into the more depths of uh, personal finance, let's start talking about basics. Let's start talking about the fundamentals. How should I start my personal finance journey? What are the first three, four baby steps that I need to do to get a rock-solid foundation? Well, I think uh, it's very, very important to plan your investment. You know, the, the mistake that we make is that we make investment as one-off activity. Uh, You know, someone comes and tells us that there is money to be made in equity market. We go and invest in equity. Somebody comes and says, look, there are tax-free bonds. I invest in that. Somebody says that, you know, interest rates on FD has gone up, so we put, put money in that. We have no clear goal. I think, like everything else in life, if you want to build a career, I'm sure you guys are planning how you want to build a career. Exactly the same way for your investment, you need to have a plan in place. Now, what does it mean having an investment plan in place? It's a very, very simple process. Unfortunately, it sounds very complicated, but it's a very simple process. All of us aspire to achieve something. There are certain investment goals that we have in life, some goals that we want to achieve in short term, some goals we want to achieve in medium term, and some goals we want to achieve in long term. Long term could be, you know, retirement planning for children education, medium term could be for buying a house, short term could be planning a vacation. So all of us have different goals. Define all your goals, assign a time horizon for each of these goals. Okay, like I want to retire after 25 years, that's my time horizon. I want to buy a house after 10 years, that's my time horizon. Set a target for each of the goal. Okay, we have to have a target. We cannot have a goal without a target. Now, for example, we were talking about if I want to retire, let's say after 25 years, how much money will I need? Let's say I need four or five crore. That becomes my target. I want to buy a house for one crore. That becomes my target. Mm. Based on some assumed rate of return for that period, we can actually work out how much I need to invest to achieve these goals. What it also does for you is it allows you to do asset allocation, which is something that we generally ignore, which means when you're investing for long term, invest in equity, investing for medium term, invest in a hybrid product, Mm -hmm. investing for short term, look at 
debt. But just one thing I want to add here. Don't forget to look at tax efficiency of returns. That's one mistake that we generally make. We don't look at how much will be the return post-tax. I also invest in mutual funds, and we know that uh, you know mutual funds we need, need to invest in the long term. But not all funds are outperformers. There are some which do not perform well. How do we decide, uh, and at what point of time uh, that we should actually check? Uh, or maybe uh, you know take a call on whether this fund is doing well for me or not or should i stop or should i redeem how do you make that call okay good good question hemant you want to take that oh, yes i think it's a, it's a very very important question i think every investor who invests in mutual fund faces this dilemma every now and then first thing i want to begin by saying you know the general perception about mutual fund is that they invest only in equities the fact is that mutual fund offer instruments allow you to invest in different asset classes you have debt funds you have hybrid funds you have equity funds assuming that we're talking about equity fund which is meant to be a long term investment now you know while equity requires a commitment time commitment it's equally important for you to monitor your portfolio it doesn't mean that you're investing for 15 years means you just uh, go to sleep after that you need to keep monitoring your portfolio i think it's a very valid question how do i monitor it see there are two things you need to look at when you talk about any investment in equity funds each equity fund has a benchmark okay it could be uh, nifty 50 okay you need to look at how the fund has been performing vis-a-vis -vis that benchmark this information is easily available you have fact sheet you can go to the website okay there there are websites which do analysis and you will know exactly how this fund has done but i think more important than that is you need to look at how it has done vis-a-vis -vis its peer group now for example if you are investing in a large cap fund your fund may be actually performing better than nifty 50 but when you compare it with let's say a uh, peer group you may find that your fund is in you know down there so what you need to look at is don't look at only the benchmark also look at peer group because then you know exactly where your fund stands in terms of performance second important thing is even though you may monitor your portfolio every quarter or maybe every 6 months don't be in a hurry to take out your money the reason why i'm saying that every fund has a different philosophy and strategy which means that if you have two large cap funds one large cap fund may be investing in a certain sector sector the other may be investing in certain set of sectors the money keep moving from one set of sectors to another set of sector in the market we know that so it's possible that for certain period 3 months 6 months or maybe even one year the fund that you are invested in may not be doing well please go beyond the performance and see where the fund is investing now if you if you feel that you can't do that yourself take help of an advisor sit down with him understand why it is you know the key is don't be in a hurry at the same time if your fund continues to lag behind the peer group for a longer period okay don't hesitate to come out of it but don't be in a hurry to exit so i think these are two ways you can monitor the performance i am investor since a few years uh, and i am investing in equities mainly so when i invest in a market when bull rally bull rally starts so i invest in market and like uh, there is no tomorrow so i invest my whole fund in the few stocks but when correction starts i feel i stuck in few stocks and not able to come out from uh, and not able to uh, put my money out of my pf so how to secure my uh, money there are 5000 stock listed in the exchange so all the stocks will not be good so what you have to see you have to find out which are really good stocks so you should have time you should have access to research and based on that when you invest then uh, if the company is good and market is not performing then you should wait you should have patience but if that sector is performing well market is performing well but the stock where you have not in, where you have invested is do, not doing well then you have to see why it is not happening then you should have to see fundamentals of the company if fundamentals are poor then you should exit out of that stock but if the fundamentals are good but uh, that sector itself is not performing right now because of certain reasons you should wait and definitely when the market comes up that share price will also come up so you should have patience in that way if uh, there is bare face does not mean that it will re remain like this only if stock is good definitely you will get returns when the market goes up on that note it's time for a very short break don't go anywhere we'll be right back Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 season 3. As an investor, I would like to know what is the best and the smartest way of uh, investing money. Is it through equity bonds or 
through debts? Well, I wish I had a simple answer for that. No, I think the key factor, like we discussed earlier, is looking at your asset allocation. Okay, it it cannot be depending on the moods of the market or mood of what is happening in the interest rates. Okay, because then what will happen is you'll keep on shifting your money. You will never have a consistency in investment approach, and you'll never make money. Okay, there are different asset classes require different kind of commitment. We talked about equity requiring a long-term commitment. Yep. So, when you will talk about asset allocation, yep. like I mentioned, I think the best thing is you define your goals. You decide what what are the goals that you want to achieve, how much time you have, how much you need to invest to achieve that. It is quite possible that you may not have the entire sum to achieve all your goals. That's a time for you to prioritize which are the goals which are more important. You may like to focus more on short term and medium term goal. You may like to postpone your investment for long term goal because you have still have a long way to go. I think you need to look at that. Now, the best way to make money from or to benefit from these asset classes is, like I said, remain committed to your time horizon. If you're investing for long term, invest in equity. Do not bother about volatility. Don't forget, especially when investing through SIP, yep. you benefit more. when there is a volatility in the market because every time the market goes down you get more number of units for the same amount True. okay compared to what you got in the last previous month the more money you invest during this volatile period the more units you get the more you get benefit but important thing is that when you're getting closer to your goal now for example if you have a goal for 15 years two or three years before you reach that goal start changing your asset allocation take your money to maybe save for investment to take a view of what you want to do with this money and then rework on your investment plan so have an investment plan define your goals decide your asset allocation remain committed to it you will get the best from each asset class so don't try to chase the happenings in the stock market or in the debt market we discussed a lot about equities and mutual funds and all but there is one more market uh, which is driven by global queues like commodity market Uh, again commodity market has specific ex- expiry dates for let's say gold silver etc etc so how good is to invest in commodity market considering the expiry date and global queues so that a uh, person who is aiming for a short term profit can uh, let's say go for a uh, investment in copper uh, let's say copper has an expiry date of next month so how good is it to invest in copper for a short term uh, profit and how good is to consider the commodity market for an investment purpose here and there are two things one is that uh, if you talk about investment in commodity so if you buy uh, gold or silver because gold you also have gold oriented mutual fund schemes or gold etf yeah. so that is investment you can do it uh, a small part of your portfolio should be in uh, gold also and you can buy gold through gold mutual funds yeah. but as you are referring as you are talking about the copper or other commodities uh we have only derivative market yep so uh, as a financial advisor especially i'll say that i'll advise you for investment not for trading okay. derivative is speculation yeah okay so if you set your goals uh, you will invest for those, go- those goals not you will not trade yep so uh, i think that uh, it should not be the right strategy to trade in the market for your goals you should invest so set your goals your whatever you have discussed earlier also short term medium term long term goals write on a piece of paper then see that how much time is left to achieve those those goals and accordingly invest in the asset classes whether you invest in uh, debt equity commodity or real estate but what you are talking about is pure speculation so which i will not advise even uh, to invest for goals well that's all the time that we have thank you so much hemant thank you so much pankaj thank you so much for having us here this session was very informative full of knowledge and uh, most importantly for people who are starting with financial planning at this age it was very important because uh, financial planning is one thing we all want to know about but we don't get such platforms where such experts come in and they tell us so much about uh, how to start with the things and how to go on how to keep on in, uh, increasing our stakes in different investment plans it was a very useful and informative session for all of us though we are a young crowd as of now sitting here so definitely most of us are very lost that what kind of uh, plans we should invest in so i think the financial experts actually clear clarified most of the myths and doubts that we usually have when it comes to investing and uh, one thing important thing that i learned about from today's session was that now is the time when you have to actually start thinking about your retirement because though it's too early so think about it that's the notion that we usually have but uh, sooner the better so thank you so much
uncles and uh, the guests were very uh, they made the session very interactive and uh, we were they made us aware of all the possibilities of where we can invest and how safe was it to invest yes uh, share markets can be uh, scary uh, if you do not have a proper knowledge of the investments but uh, once you ensure that uh, you are uh, making the right decision and investing in the right stock uh, things can be lucrative well, that's all on this episode of NSC Pinwiz, powered by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. But before we go, here's a chance for you to win a cool goodie bag by answering this viewer question. When paying off debt, which is the best place to start? Credit card. Home loan. Car loan. Student loan. Send in your answers at fwq at network18online.com. The correct answer to last week's viewer question is option A, build up an emergency fund account. Many thanks to all the viewers who sent in their replies. The winner to episode 3's viewer question is Sangam Nath M. Kutchi from Bangalore. That's all on this episode. We'll catch you next week from another city with another set of young employees. Until then from the entire team, many thanks for watching.